Hello there, it's Diorama Don here again. <clears throat> um, I made a video a while ago, uh, I entitled it Back to Basics. Um, it was just an idea for um, beginner model makers to, to uh, want to have a go at the hobby. And it, this was just an example of something that you could make very, very quickly and very cheaply as well. Um, a, a very basic building that, that, that could be done very quickly. Uh, so I th it was a, a popular video. There was uh, a lot of people watched it. So I thought I would do a, a similar kind of video. Um, but this time just, just something a little more intricate, a bit more involved, uh, rather than just a, a polystyrene building. So uh, this is what uh, we're going to do. Um, I always use uh, cardboard or, or polystyrene for my buildings. A lot of people use styrofoam and there are some fabulous uh, examples of what you can do with styrofoam on, uh, on YouTube. Um, unfortunately I can't. <laughs> For some reason, I just can't get on with styrofoam. Um, it, it may be that you watch a video of something wonderful, and then when you try yourself, it's not quite as easy as it seems. Uh, that's what, uh, in my case, that's true. So I, I generally stick to cardboard and polystyrene. Uh, it's cheaper as well. Uh, so for one millimetre uh, cardboard, better to use scissors actually. Uh, for one millimeter cardboard there must be some kind of cardboard box in your house. Uh, a cornflake packet is ideal really but if you cut up a if you cut up a, a cardboard box of any kind then you've got one millimeter cardboard straight away you don't have to uh, to buy any. Um, one millimetre sometimes, it's actually a little less than that, um, one millimetre sometimes is, is a little too thin. So if, if you cover the area, get out, if you cover the area with PVA glue and stick another piece on top with a, a heavy book or heavy weight of some kind on that, then you've got two millimetre cardboard. So you can make your own. Um, I personally buy sheets of it. I buy 60 centimetre by 90 centimetre sheets of uh, one, two and three millimetre cardboard. Uh, for me it's uh, particularly cheap. I, I, I am able to buy it uh, very cheaply. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with a cornflake packet or something similar. So we've got our one or two millimetre cardboard. And for this project, I've cut this to five inches or um, 13 centimeters by seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. Okay, there, that's the size that I've made. Um, it's going to be a, um, a bombed out corner of a building, that's all. Um, so you can decide how deep you want the building to be. So it will be like that. That will be the shape of the, the corner of the, the building. Okay, so once you've got this size, then you can decide how deep it is that way, whatever size you've got on your diorama. And then from there, just make an, an apex for the roof. You can have it as uh, whatever angle you like. So that's a, a good sharp uh, angle of a roof on the top there. Uh, <clears throat> so you've got your two pieces of cardboard. Now what you want to do is cut two more pieces. So you need two of those and two of those. Okay, that's all, you, all you're going to need. So you, you could probably get that out of one cornflake packet. Um, okay, then you need some polystyrene. Uh, 
there are different grades of polystyrene. Um, <laughs> because I'm uh, so tight, I buy the cheapest there possibly is. That this costs about 50 pence for a big sheet. Uh, so with polystyrene, it's 11 millimeters uh, wide as well. You don't want anything too thick. So 11 millimeters is fine. So lay that on your sheet of polystyrene and then just cut around. Obviously very easy to cut. So you've got the same shape as the cardboard and you just need one of these. So two pieces of cardboard, one piece of polystyrene, all the same size. And the same goes for the end wall. So you need to make the shape that you want, how deep you want it, whatever the apex of the roof. You need two pieces in cardboard and you need one piece in polystyrene. Okie dokie. So on the front of the building, you need to measure at least one inch or 25 millimeters from the edge. I will explain why later. Uh, and then from your one inch in from this edge, you can put your doors and windows. Uh, you, you can have a door in the middle, uh, one window at the top. Uh, it doesn't have to be like this. You can design your own building. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, three windows and a door. Um, the door doors are in 135 scale generally two and a quarter inches high which is 56 millimeters if you work that out that is uh, uh, 1.9 meters which is about the height of a, of a door in real life <laughs> so uh, two and a quarter inches for uh, the height of your door and then uh, three windows as you please. So what we need to do now is uh, cut the windows out. Now if you're using one millimeter cardboard uh, you can cut with one cut very easily. It's not a problem even well with a sharp knife assuming you've got a sharp knife uh, you'll cut one millimetre with one cut quite easily. With three millimetre, you won't. It's going to take two or three passes before you uh, get through three millimetre. With two millimetre, if you press really hard on the first cut, you'll cut through it. But don't do that. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't cut with any great pressure on the first cut because a ruler is very very thin and it doesn't take much with a pressure on a knife to come off the rule come off the edge of the ruler and into your finger it's very very easily done so whatever you do whatever your first cut is just make it very very light so it doesn't actually cut through the cardboard but you've got the line that you want to want to cut. So you can, if you like, use a ruler and cut down there. Or um, if you're doing a window, which is a, a short straight line, it's it's quite easily enough just to do it freehand. So that's once, twice. Now I've cut cut through cut through that board but for the first cut must be quite gentle and don't cut down to the line there start at the line at the top but don't go all the way down to the bottom turn it round and come back that way that way you'll be assured with that you won't cut beyond the line that you want you're assured that the only part that's cut is, is uh, the line that's marked so I'll just light cut 
then a heavy cut and then turn it round. Where are we? Are you seeing this? <laughs> the light cut, then a heavy cut. Light cut, heavy cut. Now, if you're lucky, that should just pop out. So, that's what you do with your windows and doors. Cut out three windows and the door. Um, I'll go ahead and do that, and uh, I'll be back shortly. Okay, so we've got our windows and doors cut out now. It doesn't take very long to do. Uh, now we can cut uh, whatever part of the building we want to be uh, bomb damaged. So I've drawn a line. We need a, a, a little bit of uh, wall at the top of the house. Um, so we'll, we'll come down there to one of the windows and then come out the other side. Well, I'll do it anyway. Why not? Again, be very careful. <laughs> okay. And come out the other side of the window. And then just a wiggly line all the way down to the bottom. Passing twice. Is that it? It's not easy to do this looking over the top of the camera. There we go. That'll do. So now we've got our shape of our uh, building at the at the front of our building. We've got uh, <coughs> half a window there two full windows and a door. Uh, now what we need to do, um, if I can uh, think what it is, <laughs> we need where we've got our um, side of the building, we've got our three pieces, two pieces of cardboard, one piece of polystyrene, all the same shape. Uh, we need to stick that together. So I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But the idea is that that is going to be the side of the house. And this is going to be the front there. That's why we need that one inch gap. Because otherwise uh, we wouldn't be able to fit the width of this. So this is 11 mil plus 2 mil plus 2 mil. 11, 12, 11, 15 mil. Uh, we need at least that so that we can put up against it like so. So it will be like that. So we'll see the thickness of the building, the walls of the end of the house. And we will do that the same on the front of the house as well. Uh, but for the meantime, I'll show you how we uh, stick this together. So I use, uh, well it's called wall putty. Uh, I, I would know it as wall filler, uh, like a, a polyfiller, the brand name normally is. <clears throat> but it's very, very inexpensive to buy from DIY shops. I mean, this, this great big tub lasts me over a month and costs less than two pounds. Uh, so it's, it's a very inexpensive material. So uh, we take that because... Um, PVA glue just will not stick polystyrene. It doesn't like polystyrene at all. So we're going to stick it with something else. So I'll just put a few dabs of this wall filler on there. Put the polystyrene on and press down. And the same with the other 
piece. And press down. Just make adjustments. And now we've got a, a, a wafer of um, cardboard and polystyrene. Okay, like so. Uh, that won't take long to dry, only a few minutes really. So, pretty good stuff. It doesn't matter if it's all the way to the edge. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So now we've got that, we need to put that up to the edge, let's do it that way. Right, so that's going to be, it's going to be stuck there. So with the other piece of polystyrene, we put that behind there up, up to the butting up to the end wall like so and then take it away and we can mark out doors and windows are going to be. Lovely sound. So we know that's the shape that we want and if we do that the same with the other piece of cardboard. So that will sit behind as well, just the same, because that's going to be at the other end. So, and we can do the same thing. So we can cut that, those two pieces out <clears throat> and then we'll have another sandwich that will sit, <laughs> that will butt up to the end of that building there like so. Okay, are you with me? So I'll go ahead and cut those out and then we'll stick it all together. Okay, so now we've got the same kind of thing. Um, we've got a, a sandwich of polystyrene and cardboard there, and uh, the same here, uh, except that the back is going to have that width of the side of the building there. So when we come to fix that together, we're not going to see that the thickness of the building down the side there so it's it's going to look like a, a, a proper building with a proper sharp corner there and we've still got the thickness of the building on the top and the front there <laughs> are you getting all this so because uh, we're sticking cardboard to cardboard uh, we could do you think I'm in a mess <laughs> if you because we're sticking cardboard to cardboard, we can use PVA glue now. Uh, so we'll put a, a bead of PVA glue down there. That will stick that. And a bead of... Where are we? A bead of PVA glue down that side, which will stick onto the cardboard there. Uh, so we don't necessarily need to use the, the wall putty. Uh, but that will sit like that. So that will be our building. Okay, so once we've got that, then we can start to do other things. 
So I'll stick that and uh, wait for it to dry uh, and then I'll be back in a moment. Okay, we'll glue the two pieces together and put a bit of a flooring in, well the ceiling and the, and the floor with a bit of uh, polystyrene and stuck it in with uh, wool filler again, same same way as we did the uh, cardboard and wool filler. Um, the next stage is up to you, uh, but it, it makes for a more interesting looking building with as much moulding uh, as you can put on. So I'll put uh, moulding all around the windows or what's left of this one, uh, all along the bottom, around the door. Uh, this could be um, uh, a sign, a shop sign, if it were a shop, or just, uh, um, just an architectural feature. Uh, and then this kind of thing at the top, and it's all two millimeter cardboard, just cut to um, well either five sixteenths or uh, three eighths, and then uh, bring it over to the uh, to the end wall to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so that's where we are now. We've got something that's looking a little more um, more interesting. So I've mixed some wall filler again same stuff but this time add, <clears throat> added a little bit of water uh, in fact it's getting getting a little bit hard now I need to put a bit more water in so I'll just do a little bit and then I'll, I'll carry on with the rest of it so with this we just need to kind of paint the whole thing with this but we can cover a multitude of sins with this stuff because it's filler <laughs> we can fill so if there's any gaps or uh, anything untoward that we don't want to uh, to see we can fill it up with this stuff doesn't matter how rough it is uh, it may be a, a rough render to the uh, uh, exterior of the building anyway uh, but if it is too rough we can always sand it down later when it's dry but we need to do the whole building with this uh, inside and out okay so I'll do that and then we'll do the next stage so we've got a covering of wall filler now I've painted it all apart from uh, where the exposed brick is. In fact, I've gouged out some of the poly polystyrene so that it's below the level of the cardboard. Um, this will be this will become apparent a little later. So just in those two places where the uh, brick has broken, not there, where we've still got the uh, window frame. Uh, but everywhere else I've, I've given it a, a good covering of the wall filler. So the next stage is we need the brick that will go in uh, the areas where the, the brick has broken, broken brick. So I've got some tile grout, some brick coloured tile grout, just a, a fine powder and mix that up with, oh dear, it, it does dry out rather quickly and this is dried out a little too much, it needs a bit more water but that, that's the kind of consistency that we need, uh, it's kind of margarine, uh, soft butter, um, I'm going to have to put a little bit of water in that, it's, it's just a little, a little too stiff for the moment so I'll be back. That's better. We've got a bit more water in there. It's a bit more pliable. So what we need to do is just pour that onto a, a flat surface. If you've seen any of my other videos, uh, you will know this is how I make my bricks. So when this is set or beginning to set, then I carve out the shape of uh, house bricks. 
but uh, we're not going to do that today. All we want is a slab of uh, dried tile grout. So I'll spread that out. It doesn't even matter really what thickness it is. So that, that's basically it. That's all we need to do. Just spread it out like that. And in a few hours, it will take a few hours to dry off, uh, then we could... Did you see that? I didn't put the camera. <laughs> Doing all this stuff and you can't see. That's better. So that's all we want. Just a slab of uh, tile grout. Uh, brick colour uh, but we also need uh, grey as well because we're going to put the uh, the brick the broke some broken brick set into set into uh, this uh, broken area here and further down here uh, so it will look like uh, the exposed broken brick but we also want this for uh, day <coughs> debris debris or debris uh, where the broken where this has uh, fallen <laughs> where this where the uh, the building has collapsed and fallen there will be debris in front and to the side of the uh, of the building so that's what we need this for so we're going to put it here and here and all around on the floor to make it uh, to make it look as though it's just happened, it's just uh, uh, collapsed or been bombed. So I'll wait for this to dry and I'll do um, a, a grey grout exactly the same. Uh, so then when it's dry we can break it up into small pieces that, uh, that will be our broken brick and broken uh, debris. Okay, I'll see you in a moment. Uh, at this point, I have an apology to make. Um, this section of video um, had been deleted. The part where I actually showed you how I did the uh, uh, exposed brickwork has mysteriously disappeared. Uh, uh, as you can see, uh, how I make my videos, I, I make about seven or eight different short videos and then edit them all together. But um, I edited... <laughs> I edited all the videos I had together and all of a sudden there was a bit missing. So um, the part where I show you how to do this is, is not there. So I'll fit this in. <clears throat> I'll fit this in somewhere into the video and try to explain. So, so what I did was, if you remember, we gouged out uh, a bit of the uh, polystyrene below the level of the cardboard. And then I, I put the... Uh, uh, wall filler in in that gap uh, and into that wall filler I just pressed a lot of the uh, pieces of uh, brick coloured grout what we made you remember the uh, uh, grey and uh, red brick grout pieces that we made so all I did w was press the broken pieces into uh, into that um, wall filler uh, then when that was dry, uh, I just went over with uh, uh, grey, <laughs> with uh, wall filler with a little black added to it to make it a grey wall filler. <laughs> I'm sorry to be a little confusing, but that is the mortar. Uh, that acts as the mortar. So in between the bricks, I added um, the wall filler plus a little bit of black to make it grey, to make it the uh, the effect of mortar between the bricks. I hope that is clear. Uh, probably as clear as mud. <laughs> so that's how I did the uh, exposed brick like that. You can have a closer look. It looks convincing. It looks as though uh, there was a, a completed brick wall there. So that's that's how I did that. 
So I'll try to fit this <laughs> this video into the rest of the video and hope it makes sense, but it probably won't. So we've got the broken brick now on the two parts of the uh, demolished building there. And uh, I went over the same process that I did in the last Back to Basics video on the, the bigger building, just a coat of grey grout and then dabbed off uh, the excess with a damp sponge. And then when that was dry, I just gave it a few squibs of uh, black aerosol paint uh, just to give the impression of the smoke damage above the doorway and the window frames and at the top of the house there. So that's basically the, the building finished. So then I went ahead and made the, the base for it, the diorama base. Uh, it's just two pieces of uh, polystyrene stuck together uh, with a piece of cardboard on the top. Uh, and then I, I gouged out or uh, marked out the uh, paving stones into the cardboard. Um, I'll show you that on another video, maybe another time. <laughs> Uh, but that's uh, that's the paving stones. And then I stuck two offcuts of polystyrene, which will be our pile of debris. So that when the house sits on the base like that, where the, the two floors have collapsed, there would be a pile of debris on the, uh, at the bottom there. Uh, and going out into the street. So all I've got to do is cover that with PVA glue and then I've got the, the remnants of what we made for the uh, broken brick. So I've got plenty of uh, grey grout that we made and the, I've got some bricks and broken broken uh, uh, grout like uh, like I made before so can't see <laughs> so I've got uh, plenty of uh, debris that I can mix and match and cover the uh, the mound there uh, it'll run out into the street as well um, I made a, a door um, if you look at uh, another video I made on how to make a panel door um, It'll show you how I did that. So that will be precariously uh, leaning against the, uh, the doorway there. And then I made, got some uh, lollipop sticks, just cut them in, uh, tear them in half. And so, so that the, the ends are not straight. <laughs> What the, what's the opposite of not straight? Bent. Uh, the ends are, look as though they've been um, torn away from the roof structure. Uh, and then I just gave them again, just a, a quick uh, black spray, just a haze of spray, not, not, not a, a dense black colour, but just a, a hint of black to make uh, smoke damage. <laughs> I hope you've got all that. So I'll go ahead and uh, finish off now. I'll, I'll stick this house to the base and then put all the debris uh, around the back and the front of the, the house. Uh, and then you'll see the finished product. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll see you later. So there we are. <coughs> We've got all the debris on uh, the two floors, uh, a pile of debris there and uh, spilling out into the front street with the uh, broken door and a few pieces of uh, uh, wood from the um, roof, I suppose, the, wood, the roof trusses that have fallen down. Um, so that's basically it. It's a, a slight improvement on the, the last um, Back to Basics video I did, but the only difference is the moulding around the windows and the doors. Uh, we've got a chimney breast, ch uh, so, well, a, a chimney stack, 
and uh, a little bit of debris. Uh, you, you couldn't quantify the cost because we used um, a cornflake packet, um, a little bit of polystyrene, which could be uh, from the packing of, of any uh, box, and um, no paint, uh, just a little bit of uh, grout and a little bit of wall filler, all stuff that may, you may be even find in your garden shed that's not used anymore. So you, you can't even put a price on it. It, it, it li literally is a matter of pennies to make. Cost really, really uh, not, not much money at all. And easy to do, really. Um, I say a, a step up from the last video, but still very, very uh, easy, but effective. Um, were you to buy this kind of thing from... Uh, uh, plastic built resin is it a resin building that they people sell uh, you'd have to pay a few pounds or a few dollars for, for something similar but there we are that's uh, that's my version of uh, a very simple uh, bombed out uh, shop or house so we'll leave it there I'll just go up there. I'm rather pleased with the chimney actually <laughs> <laughs> looks, looks pretty good. Um, so, thank you very much again for watching the uh, the video. Um, I hope you subscribe to the channel because there are uh, uh, getting on for fifty videos now, and there will be more videos to come in the future. Uh, so, uh, if you subscribe, you'll be notified when new videos come along. Um, so uh, please click the subscribe button. Uh, in the meantime, have a go yourself. Uh, let me know how you get on in the comment section. And uh, I wish you a happy modelling.